Hello, virtual GED students. Welcome to virtual GED class. We are continuing our discussion of data analysis now, adding to what we know about percents and percentages by talking about a specific type of concept known as percent change. So percent change, what does that mean? When you're talking about percent change, you're basically just talking about a uh, change number. So numbers can change by going up or down. So it could be an increase or decrease. And that change is always expressed. Obviously, we call it a percent change for a reason. It's as a percent, but notice how I qualify this as a percent of the original. Uh, really pretty simple here. It's change an increase or a decrease expressed as a percent of the original. So um, a few things I want to introduce you to uh, before I start. The first of all, as you know, guys know that I'm a mathematician, which means I hate to spell. <laughs> so I don't tend to use the, a word. I often use a symbol. So I'm going to use this symbol today. It's a mathematical symbol. It looks like a little triangle. Mathematicians use this. So do scientists. It could show up on your GED science test. In fact, I have been told that it does, and it does mean change. Okay, so little triangle means change. Okay, so let's talk about how you find change. Before I launch into percent change, let's just talk about change in general. Um, when you talk about how much something changed, so let's all use our imaginations. Mary Sell is here with us today, and James is here with us today. So Mary Sella and James talking to you now. I want you guys to use your imaginations, okay? You're gonna have to imagine really, really, really well, because I want you guys to imagine that I, last month, weighed 150 pounds, yes? Um, I didn't. It's a straight up lie, y'all. But, you know, a girl can dream, right? So 150 pounds last month. Okay. But let's pretend, though, that my weight changed. It changed. Um, you know, I probably ate too many peanut butter cups because... Uh, James, don't rub it in. James says I still weigh that much. Yeah, don't make me feel bad now, James. No, but seriously, okay, so if I weighed 150 pounds last month, now let's pretend that this month instead I weigh 160 pounds this month. Now, these are starting and ending weights, but they're not change. But I would argue that you could find change if I was given this information. So if I weighed 150 pounds last month and I weigh 160 pounds this month, guys, how could I figure out how much my weight changed by? It changed by, by 10 pounds. By 10 pounds. I absolutely agree with you. It totally changed by 10 pounds. Mathematically, how could I take the numbers 150 and 160 and reach 10 pounds? Add it. Well, if I added 150 and 160, I'd get 310. That would be a really big change. You're probably thinking that 150 plus 10 equals 160. But how could I take just those two numbers, 150 and 160, and get an answer of 10? Minus. Minus, exactly. And uh, James might be thinking, Kate, that's two sides of the same coin. Because if you're asking yourself, what number did I add? The way to find that would be to subtract. You're absolutely right. But I could take my new weight, 160, subtract out my old weight, 150, and James is absolutely right. Then I would get the change, the 10 pounds. Everything we're going to do is going to be based on this fact that are based on this assumption that if you don't know how much the change is, you know how to go find how much the change is, okay? Um, one more thing we need to make sure that we remember. So we need to uh, know how to do two kinds of percent problems for today that we've already done, and then we'll add a third to our repertoire. But do you remember how to find a percent of a number? So for example, if I asked you to find 15% of 32, do you guys remember how to do that? I'm actually going to just multiply by 32. If you recall, of means multiply. So I could replace the of sign with 32. Now I can totally do this in my calculator because my calculator, my TI has a percent button. 15% of 42 so I can put 15 type in a percent and just times it by 32 now Maricela the reason why you don't have to put the four the 
hundred in is because the hundred is already accounted for in the percent symbol. When you input that percent sign, it says, oh, divide by a hundred. It's already dealt with the hundred for you. In my calculator, I typed it in. In fact, let me just kind of change the order of how I wrote this. I could type it into my calculator just like that. 15% times 32. You just multiply to find a percent of a number. Okay, but for my poor students who don't have a calculator, they uh, can't just press a percent button. They're going to need to use numbers that they do know how to multiply by, either fractions or decimals. So they could do the same exact problem by typing in 0 0.15 times 32. We're doing that inside work. Or, of, of course, that's me dividing by 100. Do you see that, Mary Stella? When I take off the percent sign, I then therefore have to do the division myself. I divided by 100 there, so I get 0.15. Make sense? Yes. But you'll see if you type that into your calculator, 0.15 times 32, you're going to get the exact same answer, 4.8, because they're equivalent. It's the same thing. Or, of course, I could do that as a fraction, 15 over 100 times 32, and it would still give me four, and if I, you know, had it in fraction form, it'd be four and four fifths, but it'd still give me the same answer. Okay, so whether you let the calculator deal with the percent sign or you convert to a percent or a decimal, you're going to get the, an equivalent answer. You're going to get the same answer. So any of these three would be good, but the important thing here to memorize, memorize is that the word of means what? Multiply. 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 If we remember nothing else about percents, we have got to remember that. Okay, of means multiply. So we then we know how to find percent of a number. It's super easy. You just multiply. How do I find percent of a number? Well, of means multiply. I'll just multiply. Other thing that I need to make sure that you remember is how to find a percent. We learned that last time. And we learned two different ways last time. Um, I think we learned the way where we uh, did an algebraic equation and we solved using direct translation. And we also, last video, did a way where we wrote a fraction and then converted our fraction into a percent. Either way is totally legit. I don't care which way you do it. You do it. But I think I'll use my algebra way to find a percent. So let's look at an example problem. Let's go 60 is what percent? of 80. Okay, so we learned to directly translate these last class into algebraic equations and then solve them. <laughs> Does anybody remember how? <laughs> Can anybody help me translate this into an algebraic equation? Before I pick up a calculator, I'm going to translate it into a math sentence. It's not a math sentence. I mean, it's partly in math. There's the number six. There's a word, is. And then there's another word, what? And then there's another word, percent. Can you help me turn this all into math symbols? So 60, of course, is 60, right? What did we say is meant? Um, over 80. Oh, you could do it that way, Mary Sella. You're remembering the other way I did it. Sure, might as well. 60 is what percent of 80? Yes, you could put your is over your of because your is is the piece and your of is the total. And then you're right. I could press the convert to a percent button. 60 over 80 convert to a percent, and I would find out that 75%. This is not the method I was just talking about, but it sure does work. Okay. Copy that down if you're going to copy it down, because I really, really want to do this through translation, too. We need to be getting good at writing algebraic equations. So you're right, Mary Sella. That's one legit way to do this, okay? I don't want to squelch you when you're right. It's just not the way I was looking for, so I want to do it through direct translation, where I take every single word I see, and I just translate it into a symbol. Every word I see oh, okay. right underneath, I'm just going to translate it word by word, like you're just like you're taking a book and you're translating it from Spanish into English, okay? Mm -hmm. 60 is already a number, so there's nothing to translate. There's a 60. Now, the word is legit means a math symbol. Do you remember what math symbol I would use for is? Two things we learned last time. We learned that of means multiply, but is means equals. Okay, so it is, it's is that, that's what it's equal to, it is that, like I am a girl, I equal a girl, okay, it is means equals, you got that? Yeah. So 60 is, now I see this phrase, what percent, we have an unknown, something we do not know, what do we do when we don't know something in algebra? We use a letter. We use a letter, and I'm going to use P so that I remember to convert it into a percent, Okay, because I'm looking for a percent. Okay, now we learned of means what? Multiply. Multiply. Wow. So I want to multiply P by the number 80 because it says of 80. 
Okay, now this is not normally how we write um, algebraic expressions, P times 80. We usually write the number first and the letter second. So another way of writing this would be 60 is equal to 80P. And now we're about to see why your system worked, Maricela, because look, how I, would I solve a one-step equation like this? How could I work to get P alone? Uh, we uh, divide it divide by, by 60. Not by 60. 60 is not the number hanging out with P. What should I divide by? 80. 80. 80 is the number with P. 80 is who I need to get rid of. 80 is who I'll divide both sides by. And so now you can see why your system worked. Look what I end up with on the left-hand side, Maricela. 60 divided by 80. So whether you're doing it by your method, making a fraction, or by my method, writing an algebraic equation, I'm going to get to the same place in the end, okay? So 60 divided by 80 is equal to 0 0.75. But as you and I know, this is not yet a percent. I have to convert it to a percent either in my calculator or in my head. We said it's super easy to convert to a percent. You basically just multiply it by 100, and that we call that 75%. Uh, here we have some example problems. As I go to do these, just like when I go to do the real GED, they're all over the place, okay? So we're not just going to be practicing finding percent change like a lot of the worksheets on the internet make you do. We're going to be practicing interpreting word problems. What are they looking for? What did they give me? The usual, the skills we really need for the GED. Here we go. Number one says decrease 40 by 20%. Decrease 40 by 20%. And I have to tell you that most students just do this. And I'm going to write this in red because this is so wrong. They say, okay, I'll take 40 and I'll decrease it by 20%. And 20% means the same as 0.20. And so then they tell me, oh, that's 38.8. And that student is wrong, okay? Uh, so remember that when we said percent change uh, was a portion of the original. Do you guys remember that statement I wrote on the first page? Yes. Hear me use the word of, right? Percent change is a portion of the original. Of means multiply. Right now, I have the number, the plain old number 40. And then my other thing that I have is 20. It's not a plain old number 20, it's 20%. I can't just go around adding and subtracting regular numbers with percents. Remember that a percent is a portion of a number. So before I can decrease 40 by 20%, I have to know what 20% of 40 is is. So that's the first question I need to ask myself. What is 20% of 40? Eight. Eight. Beautiful. You're absolutely right. It's eight. eight. Uh, Mary Sella probably um, typed 20% times 40 into her TI. Is that what you did, Mary Sella? No, I did 40 uh, divided by five. Ooh, Mary Sella knows the trick for finding 20%. Brilliant. Yes, that will totally work, but it would only work for 20%. Nice job. I can tell you shop sales. You know the quick way to find 20% off, huh? <laughs> but I promise you, if I put 20% times 40, I would also get 8. Or even if I put 0 0.20, 0 0.2 times 40, I would still get um, 8. Mary Sella, whether you realized it or not, the way that you were doing it is converting it into a fraction and then multiplying by fractions in your head, you ninja, you. <laughs> okay, so cool. So um, yes, it is eight. So now they didn't say find 20% of 40. They asked me to decrease 40 by 20%. What does the word decrease mean? Minus. Minus. Yes. That's when I'm going to get less now. Now that I know what 20% of 40 is, now I can do the decrease. Okay, so I will take the $40 and I will minus that 20% of 40, that $8, and uh, I get down to 32, or it's not necessarily dollars, but 32. Sorry, not too many straightforward problems in the GED. More likely, the skill would be uh, kind of buried in a word problem, so let's take a look here at a word problem example. Number two says, the average price of a pumpkin decreased by 10% from Halloween 2018 to Halloween 2019. If on average pumpkins cost 250 in 2018, how much did they cost in 2019? Interesting. 
Um, in your own words, can somebody please just paraphrase for me what they're looking for? Yes, we want to know the cause of the pumpkin from 2019. So we have to... Okay, before you tell me what I have to do, I want to ask a question about 2019. You say we want to know the cost of a pumpkin in 2019. I agree. Is that the original cost or the new cost, Maricela? It's the new cost. Okay, so we want to know the new cost after the increase. Now, maybe you can clearly see what we have to do, but a lot of students struggle, so I want to make sure that I write down exactly what I'm looking for. So I'm looking for that new price after the increase. Okay, wonderful. So now, now you can tell me what you were thinking of. How could we try to find the new cost after increase, are you thinking, Maricela? So we just found the, uh, the 10% of 250. Cool, let's use a word to describe that. If we find 10% of 250, what are we finding there? What is that? 10% was the what? It was the decrease. Okay. Oh, after decrease. Ooh, I wrote increase in my notes. It's after decrease, okay. So it's the decrease. 10% of 250 is the decrease. Okay, cool. What did you figure out 10% of 250 was, Maricela? Well, whether you use our 10% trick, which we learned, moving the decimal on the first day, or you use your TI, or you use scratch work multiplying with decimals, either way, you're going to find out that that's just 25 cents. So 25 cents is our decrease. But we wrote down, we didn't want to know the decrease. We said we wanted to know the new cost after the decrease. How can I get from what I have to where I need to go? We just minus uh, 25 cents from $2.50. I'll just minus 25 cents from $2.50. I'll take the original price, I'll decrease by 25 cents, and I'll get two twenty-five. dollars So uh, how much did they cost in 2019? Well, after the decrease, we are looking at two twenty-five. dollars Let's look at number three here. Now, I've told you guys before, I just don't expect a ton of one or two step problems on the GED. I expect complexity. I expect interpretation. Um, I expect pictures Matt, going with your um, word problem. So I just went on um, the Fry's website and took a look at their ads and found a picture here to accompany our uh, word problem. Let's take a look. It says, examine the Fry's food ad below. A certain economist predicts that food prices will raise 75% in the next decade. Now, I hope he's, that's a lie. I just made that up. And I'm not an economist, so I'm not expecting I'm right. But anyway, if his prediction is correct, how much will a Noosa yogurt cost in 10 years? Okay, guys. Again, before we attack this, can I have a paraphrase in your own words of what we're looking for? So we just have to find the price of one yogurt first. Yeah, before I talk about first, second, third, tell me about my end goal. I want to talk about the price of one yogurt. The original or the new price of one yogurt? Um, now we just need to find the original. Oh, oh, you're talking about the first step, hon, and I'm asking you, where are we going in the long run? So where are they asking me to go here? What does my question ask me to do? It says, how much will a Noosa yogurt cost in... And so I agree with you that right now we don't know how much it costs. We're going to get there. But I just want to paraphrase before I know the steps of where I'm going, because this is what most students struggle with. So I'm looking to find the new price of one yogurt or the price in 10 years, you know, not right now, later. I still agree with you, though, Mary Sella. We have a problem. Usually, my first thing I start with is the when I want to find the new price is to find the old price, right? But Mary Sella pointed it out. She says, oh, we don't even know the old price. We don't even know what it costs right now, um, much less what it's going to cost in 10 years. So you're right. Let's find the price right now. I'll label that. Mary Sella, what do I know about the price right now? It is $5. Yeah, it's $5, but it's not $5 for one, right? Uh, according to this website i'm getting three for five three for five dollars so then my question is how much is that per yogurt what's the price per yogurt i don't know they did this wrong yeah they wrote their ad weird didn't they yeah yes if i wanted the price per yogurt i would need to start not with the yogurt but with the price and per divide by the three. yogurt Guys, the person who makes the fries ad is a graphic artist, not a mathematician. <laughs> um, we've got to have the common sense to know if I want the price per yogurt, I'm going to divide the price by the yogurts. Does that make sense? Yeah. 
Okay, cool. Yeah, so I was doing even wrong. I was doing how it was right. Yeah, I bet you kept dividing it and said that does not look right. I know it's yes, one hundred dollars. I did it twice. Good. I'm glad you have that kind of common sense to vet the problem. So it looks like the price per yogurt then is, yes, over a dollar. It just looks like one point, a lot of sixes. And you know, I'm not going to round to the end. So I'll just keep this number in my calculator. The certain economist predicts that food prices will raise 75% in the next decade. Uh, so this is how much my price is right now, but I've got to do a price raise. But how much am I going to raise my price by? 75%? Yes, and 75% of what? It's always of something. Of 160. Exactly, of the answer that I got before. Now, I'm not going to write this whole thing down, but I do keep it in my calculator. It's really easy to do 75% of a nice, uh, an ugly number. All you have to do is type in 75, press seconds, and the open parenthesis button, that's your percent sign. And then you can times it by the answer. You can, one way to do it is just to arrow up to the answer and then press enter. And there it appears. 1.25. Exactly. I'm getting a buck 25 of that. What a nice na uh, number to get out of such an ugly problem. And now all these students are so excited. They're like, I did all the steps. But see me, you're, I'm labeling my work here for a reason. I found the price right now. I found the raise. But they asked me to find the new price of a yogurt. So what should I do? Add it. Add it. Exactly right. If this dude is really correct, this raise is going to get added on to my original price. So let me add on the original price plus the raise. And then I should get my new price. So the original price was one point lots and lots of sixes plus the 125 gives me really expensive yogurt. I'm glad I was just making this up. Yada, yada. And that's the number I've got in my calculator right now. But Mary Sella, who lives in the real world and always goes shopping, knows that my answer is not done yet, huh? There's something more to do here, even though I accomplished what I said I was going to accomplish. What do I need to do? We have to round it. We got to round it so it looks like money. Money ends at two decimal places. I can't have all these decimal places. I don't have coins that small. So I'm going to round it up to two decimal places. As usual, I'm going to consider the next number, the one I'm about to throw away, and ask myself, is it big enough to matter? Is it five or higher? And of course it is. And so I will say that was closer to $2.92 than it was to $2.91. $2.92. So number four, Felicity heard a statistic that incidences of underage drinking have increased on her college campuses 11% in the last three years. If there were 149 incidences this year, how many incidences were reported three years ago? Okay, so once again, before we ever do a problem, <laughs> I want to know where I'm headed. What are they asking me to find? Can we paraphrase that in our own words? We have to find how many incidents we have this year. So Yeah, and is this the new amount or is this the original amount? Remember, when we talk about a change, there's a starting and an ending. Then all the amount. Yes, exactly. This one's a trickier problem. We're looking at how many incidences were reported three years ago. We're talking about the old amount before the uh, increase, okay? So we're looking for the old amount before increase. Now, this is going to make for a trickier problem. Anytime you are missing what we think of as like the problem, you know, it, we're working backwards. Algebra will serve us well, okay? This is when we want those algebra skills, okay? So, but first I need to think about this. So, even though I don't know the old amount before the increase, I do know something. The old amount is considered the 100%. And then we know that something happened to this 100%. We know that we had an increase. What does increase mean? Add. More. Add, exactly. So, we know that we had an increase of what percent? 11%. 11%. And then after that happened, then we had a new number, right? We had this 149. But this 149 here represents 
Let me just say that again. These 149 students represent 111%. The original 100 plus another 11% would be 111%. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's where it's going to get tricky because I'm about to write an algebra sentence with this. This is what I'm arguing. I'm arguing that 149 is 111% of the original. Before I make algebra out of that, does that phrase just in English make sense? Yes, but uh, it makes me more confused. <laughs> it makes you more confused. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the problem is that I have what I think of as the answer. The 149 is the new amount, the amount after the um, uh, increase occurred. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Now, I don't know the original amount, and so I'm not going to be able to find a percent of it. That's what we usually do. We do percent of the original, but because I don't know the original, I can't find the percent of it. So I have to have other skills at my disposal. So what I just figured out here by adding the 100% with the 11% is that there's two ways to talk about this same number, the new number of incidences. Now the number of incidences is 111%. That's the same as saying 149 people. One, it's in people form. One, it's in percent form. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So that's how I got this phrase. 149 is 111% of the original amount. Okay. So I'm going to set this up now as an equation. We know that if we have 149, it, we could just write 149, but we've been talking and talking and talking about how the word is means the same as an equal sign, right? On 111%, well, we can turn that into a decimal once, twice. That's the same as 1.11. Of means multiply, and the original is the thing we don't know. I'll call it G instead of O so it's not confusing. So what I just figured out is 149 is 1.11 Gs. Okay, so now I know how to solve an equation like this. This is when I need algebra, when I have to work backwards. It's not the only way to do this, but I promise it's by far the simplest. So um, how could I solve a one-step equation like this? What could I do to get the letter alone here? Uh, we divide it by 1.11. Good. And the rule of solving is I can do whatever I want as long as I do it to both sides. So I'm going to do that to the left-hand side as well. And now we don't have to know whether it's time to multiply or divide. Our algebra will tell us. It's time to divide 149 by 1.11. And I get a long, ugly number. 134.23 yada 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 mm -hmm. on the left hand side that's what i got from that and that's equal to while well, multiplying and dividing by 1.11 cancels so that g is alone so there is my original amount is everybody okay with that yes okay yeah. now as always with the word problem we may or may not have implied rounding based on my unit so guys that is 134 what incidents Incidences. Incidences of um, underage drinking. So this is an interesting concept. Like with money, we know to round to two decimal places, but what about with incidences of underage drinking? Okay, is it, par is it possible to have a partial incidence? Can you have like a part incidence of underage drinking? No. No, either it happened or it didn't, right, James? We don't have like 0.4 people underage drinking, okay? It just doesn't make sense. And so this is a time when I would round to the nearest unit. I would chop off at the decimal place. So uh, the two is not big enough to matter. It'll drop off. I'll call that about 134 incidences. So five says, Jack went on a diet and lost 30% of his weight. If Jack weighed 220 after his diet, what was his starting weight? Okay, so somebody, please paraphrase for me what they're asking me to look for. The old weight. Of the Jack. old weight. So FYI, you're absolutely right, Mary Sella, and this should make you a little nervous. I mean, not too nervous, we'll figure it out. But this is the harder kind of problem when we're looking for the old weight because we can't take the percent of because we don't know the thing we're oving with. You know, we don't know the old weight, the original, okay? Um, but this is what we do know. We know that whatever the original weight is, that's the 100%. And we know, even though we don't know it in pounds, we do know about it in percents. His original weight changed. How did it change? 
30%. Changed 30%. And Maricela, was that a 30% increase? Did that much get added on? Or was it a 30% decrease? Did that much get taken off? Decrease. Decrease. He lost 30% of his weight. So I'm going to say that even though I don't really know about uh, these two numbers yeah. in, in terms of pounds, I at least know about them in terms of percent. His original is 100 you take off that 30%, and I know that right now he weighs 70% of his original amount. Okay, so this is really cool. Oh, sorry, he weighs 70% of his original amount. Let me finish writing it down, then I'll tell you why it's really cool. <laughs> Apparently, I can't talk and write at the same time. Okay, so this is really cool because now we have two ways to talk about what he weighs now. We know that he weighs 70% 70 of his original amount now, and we know that he weighs... 220 now. That's two ways to talk about the same number. And so I can get that phrase again. I can say that uh, 220 is 70% of the original amount. Is everybody okay with that? Does that sentence make sense to you or does that phrase make sense to you? Yes. Okay, well, if it does, we can write that as an algebraic equation. So we can say 220, 220, and I'm going to come write it over here because I'm running out of space. And is means what? What did we say is meant in, in uh, math? Equal. Equals. There we go. Now, next thing, 70%. I could write that with a percent sign in my calculator, but since I'm going to do with algebra with it, I think I'll convert it into a decimal. So I'm going to write uh, divide by 100, and I get 0.70. Now we see the word of. Of means multiply. So that 0.70 is going to be multiplying uh, uh, by the original weight of the original. Great, now that's an algebraic equation we know how to solve. I bet James can tell me how to solve this. James, how could I get G alone? Divide the point 70. Inch Divide bit. by point 70. Good, and the rule of solving is I can do whatever I want as long as I do it to both sides. So there we go. On the left-hand side, I see the math to do in my calculator, 220 divided by point 0.7 or point 0.70, same difference. I get this long, nasty decimal, dot, 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 dot. And that's equal to, well, a 0.70 divided by 0.70 is just 1. And, of course, 1G is just G. And so we are done there. There's G alone. There's my, I used G to stand for original amount. So there is the original amount. Jack was a pretty heavy guy, okay? So this is, right now, is 3.14 what? What's my unit? Units will help me know how to round. The nearest 10. Uh, before you tell me that, could you tell me what my unit is, Maricela? This is 3.14 what? 3.14 dollars, pumpkins, potatoes? Um, pounds. 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 Now, you're right. You can have parts of pounds, so we could round to the tenths. But usually, if you ask someone what they weigh on their diet, think about most people's scales. Most people don't say, I weigh 3.14, you know, a 314 point three pounds or whatever. Most people would just tell you I weigh 314 pounds. Does that make sense? Yeah. So this is one, if I wasn't given any rounding directions, I would probably choose to round to the decimal place. But again, that's just a wisdom choice. It's not really uh, mandatory that we round to this place. But my two wasn't really big enough to matter. So we're going to say this man weighs about 314 pounds or did weigh that before his diet. This is complex. These are just about as hard as percent change gets when you don't have the original and you're looking for it. You know, I was writing these word problems the other day and I realized that I pretty much name all my girls in my word problems either Janet or Jeanette. I don't know why I'm so obsessed with that name, but it comes out a lot. So here we go. Jeanette used a coupon for $5 off her purchase of $29.95. What percent did she save to the nearest tenth of a percent? If they're asking me for something different this time. Any ideas? What are they? Can you paraphrase in your own words what they're asking me to find? What is the percent of five dollars? No. Okay. No, no, no. I don't know. I don't even know how to explain. How to say it. But yeah, we're definitely looking for the percent. That's the main thing I wanted for you, Mary Sella. We're look they're telling us to find a percent. It's not increase, decrease. Or five, I'm sorry, it's not the new price, the old price this time, or the new number, the old number. They're asking me to actually figure out the percent. Yes. And Mary Sally, I think what you were trying to say is that they wanted to find out what percent five is of 29.95. Yes? Yes. Okay, wonderful.
So this is what I have to say. And this is based on the second kind of problem we were doing last class. Last class, we said that we could make a fraction and we could just convert that fraction to a percent by dividing, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, by multiplying by 100, right? And so that is exactly what we can do here. Whenever you're looking to find percent change, so write this down. This is a super important little shortcut formula that will make your life easier. So if anybody asks you to just straight up find the percent change, what was the percent of the change? You will just take the change over the original and convert it into a percent. And we know that to convert any number into a percent is just to multiply by 100%. We did that last class. So this is what I think of as the percent change formula. Make a fraction, change over original, times it by 100%. Okay, so let's do it. How much did my price change by? Which one of these numbers in my word problem represents the change? $5. Yeah, $5. It decreased by five bucks if I used a $5 coupon. So $5 is the change. And what is my original price? 29.95. Great. So there it is as a fraction or a division problem. Same difference. That means the same thing. And then to turn it into a percent, we said all we had to do was multiply by 100. And I'm just going to type this into my calculator. And as Mary Stella and I learned last class, it's important not to put the percent sign into the calculator because then your calculator will think you want it to uh, divide by 100. And we don't, we want our percent to stick around in our final answer. So we're just going to type 5 divided by 29.95. And then we'll times our final answer by 100. And we'll see we get 16.69. Four, four. And because I didn't type that percent sign in there, that percent sign hasn't been dealt with. It is still sitting there just like I wanted. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. I'm almost done. I did. That's how you find percent change. You just make a fraction of change of original. You multiply by 100. Really, really simple. But I do have some rounding directions that I need to follow. Anybody notice my rounding directions? Yes. Um, round it to the nearest 10. Nearest tenth of a percent. And I have a percent here, so it is time to round. So tenth is one decimal place, right? So I'm going to cut it after the tenths place and consider the next number. Not the tenths place, but the next number. Is that big enough to matter? Yes. Indeed it is. And so the last thing that nine will do before it dies is bump its buddy up. We're going to go up to 16.7%. Now, number seven I threw in there because that's how most of the worksheets are on the internet. Really straightforward. We deserve a really straightforward problem before we launch into some GED complexities. So let's just take a look. But just an FYI, I don't expect it to be this simple on the GED. I do expect to be embedded in a deeper word problem concept. But we will just do this simple example to make sure we got our uh, steps straight. So number seven says, find the percent of change from six to nine. Super straightforward problem. It tells you what to find. We're finding percent change. And we said, we could find percent change by taking the change, putting it over the original, because that's what we're doing. We're comparing the change as a piece or part of the original, and then converting that number into a percent by timesing by 100%. So that's how we could always find percent change. That is not on the GED formula sheet, so if you want to do it this way, you'll have to remember that. <laughs> but I think it makes sense. But I have a problem. Do you guys see my problem? I don't have one of the numbers I need. It says find the percent of change from six to nine. Well, this is the starting number, the original, I'd say. This is the ending number, but dang it, I don't know the change. Go back to that very original problem that we worked at the beginning of the lecture today about my when I lied about my weight, y'all. Um, how did we figure out how much my weight had changed? James, you were the one that did it. Do you remember how? How did you find the change of weight? I just minus the one. Just minus, exactly. If you don't know the change, you're going to have to subtract. So we're going to take the new amount, the ending amount, nine. We're going to subtract the end old amount, uh, six, and we'll find out that it changed by three. Now, we always compare the change to the original in percent change because by definition, that's what it is. It's a portion. What portion of it is, uh, uh, is it out of the original? So what is my original number here? Six. Six. The starting number is the original number, six. 
So there it is as a fraction, three out of six. But we said if we want to convert a fraction or any kind of number to a percent, we have to multiply by 100%. And again, it's fine to use your TI for this if, if you find this challenging. Uh, but remember not to type the percent sign into your calculator. Okay, so, but I don't need to use my calculator, I can see that that's 50%. But I promise if you typed it in, you'd get the same thing. So you try, type it into your calculator. Do you get 50%? Okay, so what is the percent change if I go from six to nine? It's a 50%. Uh, and, oh, I'm sorry, we should specify something. When you have a percent change, you should know if it's, if it's a 50% increase or a 50% decrease. Help me out, is this a 50% increase or a 50% decrease? Increase. It is an increase. To go from six, which is smaller, to nine, which is larger, is an increase. So I had a 50% increase. You could have a multiple choice GED problem that one of it said 50% increase and one of it said 50% decrease. So you would need to be able to recognize that. Ooh, I did not leave myself much space for number nine, but let's look at eight first. Um, it says the price of butter fell from 387 per pound to 328 per pound. To the nearest percent, what was the percent decrease of the price of butter? Okay, so paraphrase, or at least identify in the sentence for me, what are they asking me to find? Uh, to see the percent they went down. Yep, the percent it went down. The, yes, <laughs> sure. So we are saying, um, by what percent did butter's price go down? Sure. Okay, now we've paraphrased what we're looking for. So we are looking for a percent decrease or a percent change. A decrease is a type of change. Um, and so... Just like before, whenever we find a percent decrease, we can always, or increase, it doesn't matter, it's the same thing. We can take the change, divide by the original, and then convert that answer we get into a percent by multiplying by 100%. This is a starting price and an ending price. It says the price of butter fell from 387 a pound, that was the starting price, to 328 a pound, that was the ending price. Okay. okay. So we have a starting price, we have an ending price, but we don't have a change yet. They haven't given it to us. This is the norm for percent change problems. They often make you find the change. The first thing I need to do here, Maricela, is actually find that change. Any ideas? How could I find out how much the price of butter changed to buy? I'm just writing down my question. How much did the price of butter change? Can we just minus? Yes, exactly. To find change, we can just minus. We said if we wanted to find change and we learned that new symbol for change, we could take um, the new price and subtract the old price. Now you might be saying, I can't subtract those. I'm gonna get a uh, negative number. Of course you're gonna get a negative number because we have a decrease. <laughs> and, and I find out I have a decrease of 59 cents. Now I don't keep, care if you keep the minus in your problem or not, because if you keep the minus around, what does the minus say? It says that you decreased. And if you don't keep the minus around, you're just going to write the word decrease. The two things mean the same thing. So, um, but I'll just write it up here so I can interpret it with you. So I have my change of a, it went down by 59 cents. And um, let's put that over the original. So which one of these prices is the original price? 387. Absolutely. 387 is the original price. It's not about bigger or smaller. It's about first in time. Great. And then, of course, I'm going to multiply by 100 uh, in order to convert it to a percent. So a negative 0.59 divided by 3.87 times 100. And I won't put the percent sign in my calculator because my calculator gets a little nuts when I do and tries to do different math than I'm asking it to do. <laughs> and I get negative 15 point yada, yada, yada. And it is a percent because I already times it by 100. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Now let's interpret this. This is negative 15 percent. Uh, do I have any rounding directions? Because, man, that's a lot of decimals. Yes. We have to um, round it to the nearest percent. Nearest percent. Wonderful. Where did we say we would round it when it told us the nearest percent? If it just says to the nearest percent, that's the nearest unit. Oh. We're going to cut it off at the decimal place. And then we did that last class, but we haven't done it this class. So I'm going to cut it right here at the decimal place. I'm going to consider the next number, the one I'm about to throw away. And maybe that's why you said tenths, because I have to look there. But I'm going to just drop it. Two is not five or higher. And therefore, that's just about negative uh, 15%. Now, what am I trying to say by negative 15%? I'm trying to say that it's a 15% decrease. 
That's why I say negative. I'm decreasing. That's why it's negative. But I could just use the word decrease. It means the same thing. So number nine, the price of milk fell from 218 a gallon to 198 a gallon to the nearest tenth of a percent. What was the percent change of the price of milk? Almost the same question as last time, but this time I didn't ask you what was the percent decrease. This time I asked you what was the percent change. Notice that? I'm going to do it the same way. It's still a percent change problem. I'm just going to change how I write my answer just a little bit. Uh, let me show you what I mean. So this is a percent change problem. So like before, let's start with the change. Let's put it over the original. And then let's multiply by 100 to convert our, our fraction into a percent. So you guys tell me, how much did the price of milk change by? Anybody? James, how could I figure out how the price of milk changed? We just mined at 2.18. Exactly, and I'm going to start with 198 because we said when we were finding change, we'd start with the or the new price and we'd subtract out the old price. Now I know Mary Sell is thinking, but I'm going to get a negative number. Yeah, I actually want a negative number because I want, if I just say how much did it change, that negative now is describing it went down 20 cents. Okay, so I'm going to keep that negative 0.2, zero because it went down 20 cents. And I'm going to divide that by the original. What is the original? 280, 218. Okay, 218 a gallon. Wonderful. And then, of course, to convert it into a percent, I have to times it by 100%. But I will just type the 100 into my calculator. So 0 0.2, uh, 0. The 0 doesn't matter. That's why I'm so lazy. Divided by 2.8. And I totally forgot my negative sign. So if I don't know how to divide with negatives, I'll go back and insert it. Insert my negative sign. And that is going to be times 100. And I get this, negative 9.17, yada, yada, yada. And of course, that's that many percent because I just times it by 100%. Now do you see any rounding directions? Rounded to the nearest tenth. That's right. Mary Stella said rounded to the nearest tenth, and then her daughter helped her talk about it. Okay, <laughs> that was pretty cute. So we're going to round to the nearest tenth. Now I want one decimal place. So I'll cut off my number after the first decimal place. And of course, I'll consider the next place, the hundreds place, to decide whether or not to round up or to stay the same. Should I round up or stay at 9.1? Round it. I'm going to round up. I'm going to call that about negative 9.2. Oh, I shouldn't do it in red. Negative 9.2%. And I am going to keep my negative sign right now. And that's really the only difference between that problem and the other one. The other one asked me what was the percent decrease. So I said it was a 15% decrease, but this one just asked me what was the percent change. So I'm going to use a negative sign to say I went down 9.2%. Now I could have just as easily put 9.2% decrease. They mean the same thing, but I need you to see that they're interchangeable. And you say, well, which one would it be on the GED? You should ask me that question. Kate, which one would it be on the GED? It could be either. It'd be a multiple choice problem, or it would be clear enough in its wording that you'd be able to tell if they wanted the negative or not. So I really, really, really wanted to include something like number 10 because, you know, we keep talking about this. I'll just let you know, get prepared here. You stretch a little bit. Uh, you might have to get a little Zen meditation going on here because here we have GED style uh, highest complexity. And we said, I don't know if there'll be your percent change problems or your algebra problems or geometry problems, but you're going to have a handful of problems on the GED that have tons and tons of steps and a lot of thinking. Again, as usual, we've talked about this before, flag them, save them for last, but do come back to them and try to work on them, and this is that kind of a problem, okay? Here we go. <laughs> to compensate for rising production costs, Jackson Sleep Store, oh, I should have capitalized that. I'm not teaching grammar today, but hello, Kate. Okay, Jackson Sleep Store is raising their prices 8.5% across the board. Their current prices are outlined in the table below. If Janet wishes, oh look, see, Janet, I told you. If Janet wishes to buy two twin value plus mattresses for her daughter's bunk bed and a luxury king for her and her husband, how much will she save by making the purchase before the price increase? There it is again, one of those long, ugly word problems uh, accompanied by too much information in a table. Sounds like the GED. So help me out, guys, before I get started, help me paraphrase. Where am I going? What am I looking for? Notice that they said, how much will she save? They're asking me to find her savings. 
Now, I like that Stephen said that we're going to need to look at it before the increase, because you're right. To figure out how much she saved, we're going to have to compare the price before the increase with the price after the increase. This is definitely a comparison problem, okay? But in the end, we're going to have to find her savings. So um, how could we find her savings? Now, when we talk about comparing two numbers, we're talking about how much they're different. That's a difference problem, so we're going to have to subtract. And the new price is higher, so we'll subtract from the new price the old price of all that stuff. Is everybody cool with that plan? Does that make sense? Yes. Stephen, does that agree with what you were going along with? Yes. Yeah, most students do word problems one pro one part at a time. So you're working on the first part. Um, I like to like, what's my end goal before I start? Because you haven't heard this lecture from me before, but so many students do half the work and then stop. So glad they did so much work and they haven't gotten to the end of the problem yet. <laughs> Should we okay. put in Maricel and that problem? Because we just buy two twin uh, mattresses in one... Uh, did you really? Okay, we'll make, not Janet. Well, I don't know why I'm so obsessed with Janet. Okay. <laughs> okay, so we don't have the same. Uh, let's start exactly where Stephen told us to start. Let's look at those prices, what I'd pay before the increase. So um, we are buying, yes, two twin value plus mattresses. So I come over here to twin. Value plus, and I find out those are going to cost me two forty nine. But of course, I didn't just buy one of them; I bought two. So, what shall I do here? Multiply. Them. I could multiply them. I sure could. I would multiply by what? Two forty nine times two. Two. Brilliant, sir. And of course, uh, that would give me four hundred and ninety eight. Y'all should totally check me. It's been a really long day. Um, I was came into work this morning already suffering from mom mom exhaustion, and now this is my second class I'm teaching. Okay, so four ninety eight. Okay, cool. But that's not all I'm buying. I'm buying something else. What else am I buying? A king size mattress. A king size mattress, and this one I'm buying in the luxury line. So luxury king. That's going to cost me. I don't know. Actually, that's really cheap. I don't know where I'm shopping. I'm getting a deal, Maricela. I bet uh, you paid more than that. Shopping in. Uh, by the airport. Oh, because by the airport. Oh, gotta go by the airport. Okay. So I have my twin price. I have my king price. What should I do with them, guys? Add it. Add it together. I'm looking for a total of two different numbers. Super easy. Okay. So 498 plus 599. And I'm looking at right now paying $1,097. You know, this is what I'm paying if I shop right now. That's very cheap. Yeah, that's really cheap. I think you pay more than that for just the king. Mm -hmm. okay, so we got that. Now we want to compare that, right? We're supposed to be comparing that to how much I would pay if the price increases. So help me out. If the price increases, Yay! how much is that going to cost me? Anybody, any ideas? So I'm going to label my work right now. I'm finding price after increase. There is at least three ways to do this. So I want to hear what you guys are thinking. We find the percent. 8.5% of a thousand and ninety-seven. You're right. Since the prices are increasing across the board, that means all their prices are increasing. We could just go ahead and find the 8.5% of the grand total. Yes. Uh, so that would definitely um, be useful. And we know the word of means multiply, so we can just do... Um, I'm going to convert it into a decimal since we've been doing that this... Game, so I would do, or this video, so I'll do 0 0.85 times 1097. Again, if you didn't convert it into a decimal, you could use that percent button in your calculator. Don't worry. Okay, I don't care how you type it in, you should be able to get 9345. Looking at this number, what does this number represent that I just found right here? What is this amount? This $93 is what? It's how much I pay for a queen mattress. It's the price no. of potatoes in England. What is it? It was 0.8%. Uh, yeah, that's the increase. This is the 8.5% was the amount they were going to raise their prices. So this is the Save. increase. So I actually have a faster way to my problem than I even thought about. I wasn't even thinking about it, but hello, if this is the increase, guess what? 
That's what she's not paying. That's the amount that she's going to save by not uh, paying the new price. So I don't need to sub like find the new thing and then subtract. I'd get right back to here. So I think I'm good to go, but I only have one problem with my answer here. Uh, can you see what it is? My problem is it doesn't look like money, right? We're only allowed to have two decimal places in the world of money, because that, that's the smallest coin we have is a penny. So I'm going to need to round this and call this, uh, she's saving about $93 and 25 cents. Uh, look at that. I made a plan. Uh, I feel a little guilty because I made a plan with you and then I didn't follow my whole plan because I realized that I already had what I needed. I, I found that $93.25 increase and hello, that what would I save? I would save the amount that they're about to increase it by. So um, I feel good with my answer. And yay, and labeling your things helps you to know what you're talking about. If we've seen anything today, we've seen that word problems, as usual, as we've been doing all this unit, can be really complex and really varied. There's not one right way to do a word problem. And even Kate, the math teacher, made a plan and got sidetracked on this last example. So, you know, um, but those mathematical reasoning skills are really what the GED is about. So we've got to develop those. Thanks so much for coming to uh, virtual GED class today. Um, had a lot of fun with you guys doing those percent change problems. Join us next class when we look at some tricky graphs. We're going to look at box and whisker graphs, types of graphs that GED students often are not acquainted with. So see you next time.